Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're gonna do a complete joint penetration weld. A lot of times you've seen us do welds with backing. This time we're gonna do one without backing. We're gonna go ahead and weld one side up solid, back gouge the other with the hypertherm plasma cutter, and then clean that up and weld that side out. So come on in, we'll talk about joint preparation and the welding symbol. All right, so we're gonna use SMAW, and this is joint designation BU2 by the American Welding Society. We're going to draw ourselves a happy little welding symbol. I've got a 60 degree bevel on here. We're going to back gouge and we're going to back weld. Thank you, sir, in the back. I am missing a symbol. So we're going to back weld in here. I have an eighth inch land in here, so my depth of preparation is going to be a quarter inch. And my depth of fill, that's also going to be a quarter inch. All right, so essentially we have, uh, we have a 60 degree included angle. So each plate is already beveled at 30 degrees each. And I have an eighth inch land on this material here. So both pieces have been prepped, 30 degree bevel, eighth inch land. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slap both of these pieces together. I'm gonna make a tack on the bottom, a tack on the top. My root, I'm gonna run in here with a 7018, 332. And then I'll probably put an eighth inch 7018 cap over top of that. We'll then go to the back side of the plate. I'm gonna keep this in the fixture the whole time. Uh, and then we're gonna back gouge using the Hypertherm Power Max 105 with the gouging head and the gouging consumables. We'll clean that up with a grinder and we'll go ahead and repeat that process on the back. We'll go ahead and run a root in there with 332 7018 and a cap with uh, eighth inch 7018. Once we get done with this whole thing, we'll go ahead and we'll do a, uh, a cut and etch on here to show you guys depth of penetration and what that weld profile is exactly going to look like once this joint is complete. So let's get to it. I'm going to give a big shout out to Jason with Fireball Tools for sending these awesome inserted clamps out. Make sure to use Weld5 at checkout when you go visit his website. Get 5% off on your purchase. All right, so as you can see, the back is slammed tight. Toit like a tiger, toit like a pants. So no penetration through the back. We're just going to go ahead and burn right into that eighth inch land. We'll come on the back side later on and we're going to gouge that out, open that up, clean it with a grinder, and then we'll weld that side after the fact. So we're going to go ahead, I've got a 332 rod in there since we're going vertical. We're going to go ahead and run at 85 amps. I've got a 15% hot start for about 8 tenths of a second. 15% arc force. I'm just going to use a little U-shape motion in here. Try to keep myself about a sixteenth of an inch below the surface. That way I can just run one single pass with an eighth inch rod. Cap this bad boy off on each side. Keeping a very tight arc length. Running side to side. I'm not worried about undercut on this. Because like I said, I'm going to go ahead and put a cap on there. But it's not going to matter because that cap's going to penetrate Take care of any undercut that I may have. Go ahead and do a restart here in a second. Flip out. All right, after any time we stop, we're gonna go ahead and clean the piece up. And then uh, before we put any other passes in, now that we got it all cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and strike about three eighths above that crater, fall back into it, and then just continue welding from there until I reach the top. All right, so as you'll see on the back side, we're not getting penetration to the back because I don't want penetration on the back. That's why we slam these plates together, put a heavy land on there, about an eighth of an inch, so we wouldn't get the penetration on there. What we'll do is when I get done, we'll take that plasma cutter and we will gouge out a nice little groove all the way to sound metal, or weld metal, and then we'll grind it clean before we weld on the back side. All right, so I got the root in. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to eighth inch diameter electrode. I'll probably run about 110 amps on the machine. We'll go ahead and cap this off and then we'll back gouge the, uh, the backside with the plasma cutter. Doing like a little weave here. A little side to side action, making sure I tie in. Cross over the edge of that plate. Hold the side just a tad. Trying to go fast through the center. Really all I'm worried about is those left and right edges. Get a good tie in over there. Cover up this cap, make sure I'm plus to eighth of an inch. All right, so we got the cover pass on there. We've got a pretty decent tie in here. We're gonna go ahead, gouge out the back, clean it up with a grinder, and do, repeat that process on the back side. 
Remember, I'm gonna cut this down to, to solid weld metal. All right, so we're on the back side now, this seam right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, uh, this new torch. It's got a 15 degree angle on it, specifically designed for gouging. And I'm just gonna go right up that seam, probably maybe one or two times, and just dig into where I'm about 3 16ths of an inch below the surface. Clean that up with a, uh, that hard rock wheel. Just kind of make sure everything's nice and uniform. I get all the carbon deposits out from the cutting process, and then we'll run that 3 32nd root and that 70 18 cap on this side. Before we get into this, let's talk about settings real quick on the plasma cutting machine. So I'm running Hypertherm Power Max 105. I'm running 40 amps. Now I have 65 amp consumables in my, in my torch here, but if I run that 65 amps, I'm probably gonna cut halfway through, three quarter inch through this, or three quarters of the way through this plate. So I back the amperage down a little bit to give me some time because I wanna, I wanna try to get in here and do some precision work, right? I wanna cut a little bit of a gouge in there and I'm probably gonna take two passes to get it all out. I don't wanna try and get it all in one shot because I might overcut. Now, a couple of things that I can do to control the depth of my cut is the angle that I'm gonna cut at and my travel speed. So if I start cutting too deep, I can pull the torch back a little bit or even angle it slightly higher. higher. So we'll go in there, I'll see exactly how it's working uh, right at the start. And then we'll just kind of, we'll go from there, we'll adjust on the fly. All right, so we got it all cut out. Um, we're gonna go ahead and clean it up. Not the straightest cut in the world, but not the most crooked. I mean, you can, you can see my hand is steady as a rock, but this is my cutting hand, right? So I got a little bit of swivel in there. Uh, we'll just go ahead, chip this uh, dross off, and then I'll clean the rest of it out with the, uh, the hard rock. This, I got this furred wheel. Like I said, it's good for cutting on the edge as well as on the face. So we'll get this prepped up. What I'll do is I'll just make the, uh, this trough here nice and uniform, and I'll, I'll just put a a slight bevel on the edges, that's just my personal preference. That way when I throw that uh, 332 rod in there, everything kind of lays in there nice and flat and I've got some uh, good area. That way I'll still have my edges exposed for when I go ahead and throw that cap on there and I can tie into those edges really well. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. All right, so here comes the fun part. I prefer to take this out of the fixture and reorient it where I could weld on the backside where I have plenty of room. But um, a lot of times you can't do that in the field, so I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna attempt to weld with my left hand. So you guys have got to cut me some slack here because uh, I'm not left-handed by nature. So we'll go ahead and run that root and that cap with the left hand. Um, I should be able to get right up against this pole and just kind of go right in there with it. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we got the root in there. I got one spot that's a little lower than I'd like it to be. That just means that when I run my cap pass, I'm just gonna slow down in this area until I get out of it, and then I can speed up just a tad. I'm gonna use the same method I used on the front. Just do a little bit of a side to side, kind of like a small weave, pause it on the sides, just for a split second, you know, to, to fill that stuff in. Uh, let's go ahead and get her capped. All right, she's done. Let's go ahead. I'm going to take her off the, uh, take it off the rack. Throw it up here on the table. We'll throw some tools on there. Check weld reinforcement. Take uh, take a look over front and back and see what we got. 
All right, so we want anything eighth inch or less, but nothing below zero. Looking pretty good so far. All right, let's go ahead and flip her over. And again. Start right here at the edge. Oh, she looks a little high right there. Right at an eighth of an inch. This one's a little crown up. This is the one I ran lefty. That's a bit different. All right, we're good as far as weld reinforcement. But wait, you didn't think we'd forget about doing the cut and etch, did you? We're gonna go ahead and take it over to the saw. I might have to trim it down a little bit just to get it in the jaws uh, so we can, we can cut it down and then we'll go ahead and polish it up and we'll hit it with some acid. All right, folks, there you go. Complete joint penetration. Got even weld placement on both sides. Turned out pretty good. Uh, weld reinforcement was fine, and the macro etch looks pretty good. Big shout out to Hypertherm uh, for sending us this gouging torch. I highly recommend you guys picking one of these up. We've used Hypertherm products quite a bit in our shop for over uh, the past couple of years. We use a lot of handheld cutting. We do some mechanized cutting to bevel all of our plates. We use Hypertherm on our CNC plasma cutter. All around great equipment, and this torch makes a big difference. Imagine trying to do the same back gouging if you have to back gouge all day with a 90 degree torch. Yeah, it's possible, but this is a lot more ergonomic. Okay, it's a lot more comfortable, a lot easier to manipulate, scoop up in there, do precision work. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty good product. So thank you Hypertherm for sending this out so we could shoot this video today. Uh, if you guys learned something, uh, go ahead and click that like button down there. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down there. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, make every world better than your last. You want to drop some acid? What? No, man, we're going to do a cut etch on the plate when we're done. Can you get the night all? No, I don't need uh, an extended warranty for my vehicle. This guy. This was your idea.